to look at game one. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, well, a lot of talk about the composition and which composition OG ran. And honestly, when we looked at it in the beginning, we thought that OG was outdrafted. Yeah, this was an example of a game where H2K with a superior picks and bans phase in our minds, just the execution was so poor. It completely undid the superior draft. And, you know, coming out of the bans phase where we had so much priority on AD carries, the first pick, Corky, everything looked great for H2K. As we were going through the draft, they even managed to undo the uh, the potential Juggermore composition. But a couple of the picks mixed in there kind of didn't sit too well with us at the desk. I mean, yeah, I think the, the Lee Sin was kind of a bit weird, even when Rexa was open. And we know that Rexa is a pretty high priority jungler. I don't know why the Lee Sin is there. But other than that, I think H2K had like the perfect setup actually. When they first picked the Corky, they baited OG into picking Kogma because that's what the Europe, like the normal answer is, Kogma into Corky. And then they kind of countered that again with the Lulu Olaf. And I thought it was like a really clear and easy game for H2K because if Olaf gets onto the Kogma with the Lulu ultimate, there's no way Kogma can do anything. But um, to me, the end gauges were kind of really, really off for um, H2K and it was a really easy time for OG to actually initiate the team fights, pick someone off and then clear like uh, the backline was just yeah, yeah, yeah. assassinated by the uh, Ari then, which should not happen in the first game, uh, first case because I thought the Ari pick was personally like not that good but it worked out in that game just because of the way the end gauges worked out and how the game kind of uh, progressed I think. I think if we head back to the pick and ban, I would like to comment what Origin did. I feel they had the possibility to completely destroy H2K in the draft simply by uh, the Kogma is really good into Corky. This is considered a very good matchup for Kogma because of the range disparity and the old similarities. They kind of work the same way. And uh, that part of it is fine. But they could have first rotation the Lulu, flexed it. I, I don't see why they would pick the Shen. They could have flexed a lot of things. They could have also flexed the Shen possibly with support. But they picked Shen Alistair. I think this is probably the worst possible combination they could have done because mid lane is not a role right now that has a lot of counters in a way. It's very like farm and you just relax and push. There's not really hard counters. And with that in mind, I feel it's way more important to last pick your top lane because there's, there are very like these matchups that eat other like matchups alive. For example, if you play Fizz into Maokai, this is like a good example. And it kind of forces the enemy to pick the Shen, for example, and you're put in a better position. Yeah, uh, maybe some of the first game syndrome, seeing what we could pick and maybe base the rest of our plans off that. Still a risky draft from OG. I think we can all uh, agree on that. And you touched on it already. Some engages from the side of H2K were not very logical. Let's look at one of the replays where it actually starts off quite well for H2K when they uh, counter OG jumping in in the mid lane. So right here, it starts off with the, this, like when Ari doesn't have ultimate, she's very weak. She only has to rely on her Q and her flash, and it's very easy to pick her off with the Nautilus. You can see Cassian coming in here from the left side. He obviously wants to catch the Peke, tries to flash, his, flash away, but it's not enough. And this starts off really, really well for HK. This is a very, very good fight for them. But then all of a sudden, Lulex does this. And all I'm thinking is, Betong Yuke, get ready. Because <laughs> it's actually... It was a game-winning play that turned disastrous. Potentially for H2K. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a potential game-winning play, but, uh, uh, you know, the play that eventually would really win the game came again from, yeah. from unfortunately, from Lulex around the Baron pit. Uh, we've got a replay of that one as well, because this was... Uh, it went from bad to worse for, for Lulex's attempted engage right now. And, uh, you know, this... I, We were looking at it and we are thinking, what is he going for here? Because he doesn't have the support of his team. Odo Amne is so far away in the river. They talked about it on the caster desk. He had no real options to kick there. And once that is gone, the offensive flashes come in from Origin. The casters broke it down. Crepo was talking about four offensive flashes used because they know they've won this fight already. If one of your primary engage players mm. in the jungle in Lulex is making engages like that on a Lee Sin when uh, he's pretty far behind, they've got to at least change up their mentality uh, going into game two. Well, there's a couple of questions here, right, for H2K. Uh, first, what springs to mind is, of course, communication in-game. How much can you put entirely on the shoulders of Lulex? How much do you think is him being possibly under pressure by someone who's waiting in the wings? Or is that a team as a whole faltering and not making the right calls? Maybe as Coach Yamato. Well, I, I could... I, these mistakes, these two, I think you could uh, pinpoint them as individual mistakes. But I, I can still understand the there might be some kind of pressure with Betong Yuki being on the bench. I think this kind of pressure could be like a double-edged sword. Otherwise, it might make you play better, but it could also make you play worse. You have to prove yourself in a way. And I think maybe that's what's affecting Lulex in this game.
Dexter. I mean, if I would have to play with a sub sitting in my back, then I would be like, okay, if I don't do this and this correctly, then I might get subbed out and no one wants that. Everyone wants to play the game. And if you make that one mistake in the game and know that you kind of messed up, I think it's pretty heavy on your shoulders and you try to redeem yourself, try to get, go for that play. And when we saw this game, uh, game losing move, the second replay we just saw, where he just jumped in and baited his entire team into the death, followed by the Baron, then that's kind of probably like the pressure of him trying to redeem himself. But at the same time, it completely backfired and lost probably the game there. So I can also see on the side of H2K going into a game two where they're now on the other side. This is the side where uh, H2K will be red side. If they've got something specific planned with Lulex, they may keep him on. I don't think it's imperative that they go, oh, we have to swap him now. Maybe they'll stick with what they know. It's now up to Prolly to see exactly what H2K are going to do for Game 2. Well, we'll see uh, what Game 2 brings. And as we speak, Origin and H2K are gearing up for Game 2 in this best of five. And as we take a break, let's get a closer look at the European rookie of the split, Origin's AD, Carrie Nils.